Thank you oh guys so God. much. Thank for you being for patient. waiting. <laughs> Thank you for being patient. I didn't even get a chance to do an ad. Everyone in Discord, I am like, I know. I about had a heart attack. Look, it's been one of those mornings oh where. Oh my God, about we, had a heart attack. We've been going at like 150 miles an hour every single day. And this was the morning where Zach and I, and we didn't even know this until we talked about this. We both woke up at 7 30 in the morning. We looked at the time and we're like, you know. I think I'm going to sleep a few extra minutes. Yeah, I, sl- I slept an extra uh, hour, hour and, and a half, half. and <laughs> it felt fucking great. Yeah. And then I immediately went into panic mode mm-hmm. uh, and was like, oh, oh, I got so much to do. Yeah. I got so much to do. And everything. <laughs> what was that noise? Who did that? Uh. Uh, every <laughs> uh, <laughs> every <laughs> Don't make me nervous right now. Uh. Um, everything was working really great until right when we went live, five or 10 till. 10 minutes till mm-hmm. is kind of when we go live and we don't push it to YouTube and it'll right before uh, just to check everything. And our computer said hardware encoding, en- encoding issue. Mm-hmm. Hardware encoding issue. <laughs> oh, I think Lucas forgot to mute his mic like we asked him to. <laughs> That's what it is. That's what it is. He forgot to mute his mic. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, it said hardware encoding issue. Mm-hmm. And I tried two other things. And what that was doing is without being able to use the graphics card to output at NVEC uh, conversion, it was putting 100% of the resources on the CPU, which would immediately like blue screen and overrun your CPU because all the software were running with video. So uh, I quickly went to the NVIDIA website, downloaded a new driver, uh, uninstalled the old driver, flash installed a new driver, restarted the computer, and now it's working. <clears throat> That's all within the last three minutes. <laughs> 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 Uh, um, so, so it's gonna be a good day right oh my god dude this has been a crazy week you know i yeah. i think last night and, and we talk about this kind of every day as we update ourselves in the morning but we keep kind of going through these like how tired are you and i kind of this morning i started off like man i feel i feel great that extra hour and a half but then the amount of work that i had to get done super fast to get ready for the stream mm-hmm. made whatever energy i felt like i had at 10 a.m yeah gone Completely gone. Yeah. Because now I feel like I've been running in circles as fast as I can, and I'm exhausted now. Yeah. And that's kind of how I feel uh, as well, because, you know, I keep telling myself I want to put together, you know, all the notes for the show the night before, but by the time we're done streaming, I'm kind and of like... And then we clean up. Yeah. I mean, we, we never up. lay down before midnight. Oh, no. No, I don't think I've not. gone. I don't think I've gone to bed before one o'clock uh, at all. And, and then, so like, yeah, we were down here, we were playing the game, and then we cleaned up, and then I did some Instagram stories telling people what was going to be happening today, yeah. and then I woke up, and I was like, yeah, I got to prep, like, all the notes for the show, you got to make the thumbnail, you got to prep the live event, and mm-hmm. all that sort of stuff. It's like, it's a lot of, it's a, it's a pretty big process, but, um, you know, I'm super glad that everybody's here. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. Uh, we had a lot of fun yesterday talking to Ethan. Uh, what happened? Never mind. You know what? I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to worry about it. On a restart of the computer, I have to go into the router. Anytime I restart the computer, I have to go into the router, check all the router settings for all of the equipment, and uh, and then I need to reassign companion to the right <coughs> IP address to interact with the ATEM, which then outputs to our tablet. And because I had to restart right before we went live again, now none of my camera controls are working until I go back. So we just won't be moving the camera. That's fine. That's d- yeah, that's just not going to happen. That's okay. That's the okay. amount of work that goes into making sure uh, we're able to control this Every day. Um, we're doing hypercast, obviously, at 1 o'clock on, until 2. And then 2, we're going to go upstairs, I believe, right, with Malika. No, we're going to – she's uh, – at 2, she's going to do down here some mm, okay. breathing uh, and yoga exercises that you can do to help reduce anxiety there because everyone's very anxious. That's true. Even us. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> then at 3, we're going upstairs. She's going to be making pork wontons, and I'm going to show you guys how I prepare and smoke a pork tenderloin. Woo! And Ooh. our late dinner will be pork tenderloin out of the smoker. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. I'm excited about that. Then at four, I see Matt laughing over there. <laughs> <laughs> then at four, we're going to be doing board games. We're going to be playing Sinister Six. It's a very Spider-Man themed day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you probably can't see, but we had Spider-Man uh, playing in the background. Because at 6 p.m., we're doing dinner and a movie. And we're watching Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. So if you have a Netflix account... You can jump over to Twitch at 6 p.m. And uh, we have a countdown timer and everything for the movie. You can hit play at the same time as we do. And then we're just going to watch the movie together and have a, have a, have a ball. That's kind of like our stress reliever for the yeah, day. Yeah, it's been like my favorite thing that we've done all week to mm-hmm. see how many people are watching along. Train to Busan was so much fun to watch oh with the chat God. last night. <laughs> that movie oh, my God. That movie was crazy. I was, fr- I was freaking the fuck out. <laughs> it did not help with anxiety management. 
No, it but it was not such help a good with anxiety. movie. Very hard to watch right now. I, w- I think I think honestly that movie made me exhausted because the whole time I was like breathing heavy and just my emotions were 100% invested into that movie. It was so incredibly good, and yeah, I'm I'm really glad that we're doing them. I think it's a nice break for us between doing all the gaming, and then after the movie's over around eight ish because I think the movie's just under two hours. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're gonna be doing Death Stranding. I think we're gonna go back to Death Stranding. Yeah, and you know we wanted to try a couple new things last night. Maybe I'll experiment with that some more over the weekend. But uh, I actually kind of want to get back into Death Stranding. I'm enjoying the story. Yeah. I'm enjoying the setup. Uh, I like how weird and. At times, calm and peaceful, but then really intense and stressful. Yeah. So I'm, I'm excited to jump back into that. Yeah. And Cat Cat on YouTube says, let's just say hyper is keeping me from going stir crazy right now. So thanks. This is keeping us from going stir crazy, yeah, we honestly. Actually, we had a discussion last night after the cameras went off. And I know I saw a couple people in Twitch chat asking, is the network working today? Yeah, I stayed up really late last night, resetting all the – I got we got our Spectrum business line back up. So I had to reset everything in the studio again. And kind of put everything back the way it was supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Um, but we had a talk last night after we were done about how we're kind of glad. Like, this is hard. This is really hard work for us. And we're putting in really, really long hours. But the alternative is for us to be doing nothing. Yeah. And I think we'd be going stir crazy and getting really anxious. Because the more we look at the news, the more <coughs> we aren't, we don't have work to do. Yeah the more you kind of just sink into yourself. Mm -hmm. And on that note, I wanted to introduce our guests who are in exactly that situation. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Uh, man. We got Matt. (laughs) He's all like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we got Matt and Lucas joining us. I'm just going to – we're just going to switch them right in right now. Hey, what's up, buddies? Hey, guys. It's good to see everybody. High fives all around. High fives. (laughs) Fucking Huck in the background. High fives. (laughs) My dog is being very good. Uh (laughs) This is this is how he asks. This is how he asks to go outside. He sits by the door, super quiet and polite. Oh my! <laughs> Look God. at him back there. <laughs> Sad boy. JPEG. <laughs> every time we cut to you, it's just going to be such a treat. Yeah. I, I kind of hope. Huck, I kind of hope every time we cut to him, Hug just slowly moves like closer and closer to you. Yeah. <laughs> Terrifying. So he's right he's behind a, you. He's a real good boy. <laughs> so Matt and Lucas, uh, for those that don't know. Lucas is one of our full-time employees here who has mm-hmm. not been allowed to come into work. Yeah. He's had to stay at home and work from home. He's also your brother. Ooh. He's also my brother. And <laughs> Matt is one of our ex-full-time employees that we still are friends with somehow. So, um, Yeah. <laughs> just like uh, just like an anime, I always, uh, you know, they always befriend. Um, they always befriend well, every, everyone. You know what I mean? So yeah. Friends. Yeah. Okay. yeah, dude. Yeah, just yeah, like yeah. an anime. Just like an anime. <laughs> dude. That checks out, bro. That just checks like out. That, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so how are you two holding up? Like what's, what's life been like in solitude and, and confinement without a bunch of work to keep you occupied? Uh, I've actually been working. I don't know if <laughs> you guys knew, but Malika called me a couple of days ago and gave me eight tasks. And then Zach called me like two hours later and gave me four more tasks. <laughs> so, and I don't even know if you guys talk to each other about it. Uh, so. Probably not. <laughs> I got, I got a big old to do list of stuff I've, I've been working on. Uh, but on top of that, I'm just playing a lot of video games. At uh, I clock out at nine, mm-hmm. and then I play some video games. Yeah, hang out with my dog. <laughs> That's great, man. Yeah, uh, yeah. For me, I'm tight. I'm I'm working, but production has halted for us at Disney, um, uh, especially at my studio that I work at for Disney. And so I have like, luckily, I finished shooting all the shoots that I had scheduled. We were in pre-production for our next set of shoots, but those have obviously been postponed indefinitely until we figure this out um so i'm in rap book mode right now which doesn't give me much to do be, um and how it works for me is i um i'm i'm on an 18 month contract with them and as long as we have projects so there are days allotted for me on the budget which i i work with my producer to create um and we we i have that many days you know i i, I charge to a job so if even though we're wrapping out um i would still be like planning the next set of productions right. and with just wrap out it's you know i'm just kind of counting down the days until i am out of days which i'm scheduled till end of april um my 18 months not up until like the next year but you know we need productions in order to for me to get paid and i've yet to hear Uh-oh. from if 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 after the end of april if i'm gonna have any days or how they're gonna take care of freelance people because we have a lot of freelance people like editors uh producers and such mm-hmm. that it's kind of scary i don't really know some like i know right now editors this week like i don't 
they can't work. So I don't, right. I don't know if they're charging them or what, but luckily yeah. I'm, I'm able to work until at least end of April. Um, and hopefully we get something I can do, but uh, I'm a little you, scared. Did you get a chance to watch Malika's talk with the financial planner and CPA yesterday? No, I missed that. You should go back uh, and check out the VOD. It was really interesting, and they had some yeah. great tips to help relieve some anxiety moving forward during all this. And I think not to be an alarmist, but you know, it's kind of making us think about how we have to be running our business right now. One of the things uh, the financial planner said is, you know, we don't know the bottom of this. Yeah. We don't know the bottom. So, you know, be careful and be safe because uh, yeah. we don't know the bottom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think yeah, the other thing I, too is like a lot of people are not that are not taking things into consideration, and this is a I want to say this is a very small minority of people. Uh, again, it's a minority, so it's a very very small group of people. But I've seen on on social media a lot um, these people talking about how companies like Disney or Warner Brothers or Netflix and this and that and the other. This is an oper This is a opportunity for them to put out as much as they can and to finish these shows early and to get these shows out early but if you put out everything and you have nothing in production yeah you're fucked in six months but not only that these studios don't allow you to take the stuff home yeah mm -hmm. you have to be connected to their networks yeah like when i worked on visual effects for all these marvel movies i never worked from home you sign yeah. contract after contract after contract these editors these effects artists these, you know, anyone who's doing like coloring or or anything that revolves around post production, they can't work. M most of them can't work from home unless they're at a very high level, and they can, you know, they're doing things that don't necessarily pertain to the footage or the shows themselves. And like right now, like you know, some of our our footage is uh, like we're our, my shoots are going through clearance right now, and yeah. I need to go through. We have a Disney website that we use um, to go through this process, and we can't get on it without the servers. So we do have a VPN that we can use, mm. but because everyone's at home, like it's overloaded, and the yeah, server right man. now can't handle it. So I can't get in, my producer can't get in. So it's kind of like, ah, what do we what do we do? You know, so right. it, it's it's stressful, man. What about you, Lucas? How are you handling working from home and dealing with that stress while you tune in uh, and see us having a grand old time? Yeah, that's what's tough. Is uh, <laughs> uh, honestly, I'm I'm not like awful. I don't hate working from home. Uh, it's really just like, yeah, I guess it's the dread of like, okay, when does this end? When can we get back into it? Uh, because there's a lot of stuff I like to do on the side that like, that's all just halted, obviously. I yeah. can't be making anything else. Uh, so I'm just 100% just working on hyper meta games, you know, for this Blood Bowl thing. And it's like, when's that going to start, though? Because it could be months down the road now. So yeah, uh, I guess that's that's my issue is I don't have I don't have any trouble working. Uh, I have more trouble staying focused and positive. Gotcha. Any tips that you've learned or discovered or things you want to share with the audience? Um, no, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm bad. I'm bad at this. I, I, I'm good at working, but I'm not good at staying positive. I actually, I, I've got like a, a little thing in, in the back of my head of like, okay, I can play video games at 9 PM if I crush out my to-do list. And that's kind of all that's like, that's keeping me going. But then also when I wake up, I'm trying to like keep my routines going. You know, I'm trying to do my, do my showers, my, my brush, my teeth, uh, you know, hygiene stuff, and then go for a little walk with my dog. Who's trying to go outside right now. I mean, if you want to <laughs> take him out, man, we can, uh, we can, talk to, we're gonna, we can talk to Matt for a little bit. I, I mean, I kind of want to piggyback off of Lucas though. Cause you know, part of it is I, I live here, you know, me and Katie live together, uh, my girlfriend, and she is really good about keeping me like having like, you need a to do list, you need to like plan your day. Like, uh, and yesterday she wasn't home. Um, she's actually, <laughs> she, she, so I was just playing Ori and the, and the Will of the Wisp all day. I literally played all day and I was like really, I got really down and depressed and like I didn't do any physical activity yeah. uh, or anything productive. So, um, you know, um, she kind of reminded me that I need to like, this morning I went on a run, I made breakfast, I had like a routine, I did some work, um, and just having some sort of routine has really helped me. And uh, it's it allows me to play video games and not feel bad. It allows me to stay focused and just kind of keep my sanity. It's I think physical, physic like I need to be fit a little bit physical every day because um, mm -hmm. otherwise I just I feel even though I might like not physically like look like bad, I feel bad, you know. So it's <clears throat> it's been huge to go out and at least walk or 
try to run, but fun fact, running still sucks, guys. I, yeah. <laughs> oh. I love all these, I love all these posts on like Instagram of like, you know, you, your, uh, your friends that like to Instagram, they're like, you can still do all these things like go on a hike or a run. And I'm like, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean still? <laughs> I, I, honestly, though, like talking with, like seeing you guys stream and being involved with the watch alongs has really helped. Just like interacting with people like i still have been doing uh my podcast hit points uh with emily and naeem and uh and my other podcast U- U- ultimate fictional character and it's just been so nice to hear people and interact with people and just kind of do what we've been doing it's been really really good i think yeah i i agree and you know last saturday and this is kind of before any sort of like mandated we had decided though yeah as a as a crew yeah exactly any and before any sort of like uh mandated social distancing was put into place you know, we made the decision that, like, okay, we're going to stay in. We're not going to go out. We're not going to, you know, do anything like that. And uh, so last Saturday, just one day into the thing, I was kind of already feeling a little bit, like, stir-crazy to some to some extent, you know? I wanted to go outside. I wanted to go do stuff. It was stuff. worse over the weekend. It was. Once we started working like this, and that's why, I, like, I'm, <clears throat> I'm very tired and I'm very ready for the weekend, but yeah. I'm also kind of nervous about the weekend because I don't think I'm going to be able to enjoy it. Yeah. I feel like I'm going to wake up tomorrow and be like, ah, it's the weekend, and then an hour later I'll be like, oh, wait, I can't go anywhere. Yeah. I can't do anything. I, I, I'm also, I might as well fucking work. I'm also, like, a little, a little worried about that to some extent. I definitely want to go outside and, like, take a walk somewhere. Should we somewhere? do a mandatory – hike tomorrow we you should. and Malik and I like just force ourselves as if it's like a work requirement we for our, say, our health I think so I like I, I think if 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 you can, can you guys push me in the wheelchair because I won't be able I won't be able to last very long yeah we'll bring it with okay, us thanks. I guess <laughs> what if we got one of those little like uh you know in death training I'm just gonna pull a rope <laughs> yeah like, well like in death training you put the dead <laughs> oh, body on his shoulders I'm Norman Reedus and yeah, you're the dead ha- body can you haul me okay that would okay. be so much fun <laughs> I'm down let's do it oh my god <laughs> no but I mean like and I and I know that it's hard for a lot of people because you know s- some people are in situations where they, they may not necessarily have like a like a mountain or somewhere they think they, they can go hiking and they also might be sick, so for them it must be like well, well like I'm I'm disabled. I can't. Yeah. I want to. I love fresh air, yeah. and I love being outside. But I have to gauge like, okay, if I go out on a hike, even though I might really need it, how much extra pain is that going to put me in? Yeah. And if I force myself to go on a hike, it's going to make my uh, immune system overreact. Right. Uh, the next day and I'll have bad flare-ups, and then I'm more susceptible to getting really sick. Yeah. So I have to be really cautious of that as well. Yeah, and like that's that's the thing that's like super stressful because yeah, I, I was down here last night and I was like looking up to see like what's the weather like up in the mountains. Oh, there's a lot of places that have great snowfall and like I'd love to just go see some damn snow. But at the same time, you don't want to go up there, go on a hike, get sick, come home, and then all of a sudden you take a walk to the store and there's 15 people within you know 10 feet of you and somehow you well, get a lot sick. of those uh, hotels and places like that are all closed down right yeah. now. I mean the government mandate from yeah. california is like if you're not an essential business mm-hmm. you're not going to work yeah like so yeah. if you're going up to the mountains you're going for the day and you're coming home you're not spending yeah. the night you're anywhere. gonna do it lucas but, style you're gonna take yeah. your little your little hammock with the sleeping bag and <laughs> well my uh, my birthday is in two weeks and yeah. i was planning to probably go up to yosemite but they just shut down all the campgrounds there so that's that's a no-go hey man yeah. uh, but I, I guess i could own. drive up for a day yeah i know and that's that's the tough part is like yeah. just just trying to find stuff to do that limits your uh, interaction with other people, but also allows you to like see the sun. I mean, we're down here all day, except for when we did comics and coffee, and I loved being able to go upstairs, yeah, just for an hour to look out the door or look we out the window. We need to start opening this garage door, yeah, right in between with, shows. Right between shows, we yeah. should just do it. We should just yeah. open it up, get some fresh air, feel a little bit better there. <clears throat> so, are there any yeah. topics you wanted to jump into today, Adam? Since we are doing this every day for an hour, I, I made like a grab bag of stuff that I thought might be kind of interesting to talk about. But I'm also open, like if you guys, if Matt and Lucas, if you guys have anything you want to talk about, it doesn't even have to be necessarily okay. related I got to one. our industry. I got one, Matt. Yo, why should I care at all about Animal Crossing? Uh, strap in, boys. Zach, 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 <laughs> you, look, I see you, and I just see, like, a ball of I'm scr- about to end this man's whole career. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dude, it's just, like, it's just, like, so 
it's just a good chill time. You can relax. There's the music's really calming. It's just a way to kind of like build. Matt, does that does that sound like me? Does that sound like something I'll enjoy? It doesn't, but you could use it, man. You could use it. So you just play a little person on an island, and and what's the objective there? The, you're just you're just living Social your distance. life, upgrading your town. You're uh, talking with the the villagers and people who are actual players, and you're giving gifts and and collecting fossils and fishing and. And you're 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 cultivating all this stuff for your town to like make it better and better. Um, and you're it's just a real real chill time, y'all. It's just a real chill time. It's about friendship and like relaxing. I don't think you'll like it, but I love it. <laughs> Meanwhile, he loads up Doom. He's like, I love this. <laughs> it's like a less intense Stardew Valley. Uh, oh um, yeah, not for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Less intense but- Stardew Valley. But the characters you meet, man, are so fun. They're so fun. All the yep. villagers, and they're great. It's just, it's just charming. It's got a lot of charm. Well, I know to it. Emily got it for Malika for her birthday, which yeah. I thought was really sweet, and she downloaded Aww. it last night. So Malika's probably going to be checking it out. And uh, I know she's already friends with a lot of people in our community on Switch. Uh, so there is like a multiplayer aspect, right? There is. I actually this morning uh, I went on. Uh, I visited Emily. I went to her town. Uh, where I literally, it's it's so cute. You have a little airline in each town, and you go into your Dodo Airlines, and it like flies you like to their island. And I got to like, I went to Emily's island, I went to Mika's island, I went to JPC guy's island. Uh, we exchanged fruit because if you're if you have you have your own town fruit, it's like your native fruit. And if you get fruit that's out that's not from your town, it's like you could plant them and get trees out of them that are that fruit, and they're more they're more expensive. Always gonna be out here spreading viruses in the world of Animal Crossing. For real, social distancing, <laughs> six feet, baby. Come on, Jesus. I'm honestly, it's just really nice, and like you can interact <clears throat> and send messages in there. And I left bullet, I left a haiku for Mika on her bulletin board in there, and it, it was really, it's just been nice to like interact in this sense. I don't know, it, it's. I, I was real bummed yesterday when I there was a chance I wasn't, I I, I didn't think it was gonna get here, and I got here. I was just so relieved. Um, but yeah, man, it's dope. I mean, Luke, Lucas, are yeah. you uh, gonna try out Animal Crossing? I'll probably be downloading it tonight. I don't know how much I'll play it until uh, my roommates are getting it, but it's it's coming in the mail, I think, for them. Um, I uh, I've been playing this game, Oxygen Not Included, and I'm obsessed with it. What's that? Uh... Uh, it's it's a little survival game made by the same people that did uh, Don't Starve. Oh. And, uh, oh yeah. It's like it's a lot like Factorio. Uh, if you guys ever remember me playing that game, it's like you're stranded on this on this planet and you're trying to build a spaceship to get off of it. Uh, but you start from scratch, and you get, like, new um, – they're called uh, duplicants. They're people. Uh, you get new people every other day uh, to, like, expand your colony and stuff. But the thing about the game, it's super cute. It's that art style uh, that they make, like, clay, I think is what it's how it's pronounced. Uh, but it's very, very scientific. Like, you can get very in-depth about it. You have to keep track of, like, all of the gas levels in your colony – and uh, thermal levels and stress levels and all this kind of stuff. Oh, geez. Very good. Super good game. Have you tried out Frostpunk yet? Yeah. yeah this I... is like this is way more intense than Frostpunk. Oh, shit. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. It's crazy. Oh, the, are you, that's, I mean, Frostpunk's already super intense. It's man. very intense. Oh, you wow. You should watch or like just Google people that play this game and like the, the all of the tutorials that people have made for this shit is insane. Can I? There's a game um, that I would recommend to um, you. Might like it, Zach, if, if, but I think definitely Malika will love it. Is uh, Ori and the Will of the Wisp? Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I would dig it. For oh sure. my god! The it art. is the art is gorgeous. The music is so in, so beautiful, and the story, just like the first Ori, it's like you have these big scary creatures, but then you find out that there's they're not just the bad guys. They're very complex, and they it's all through animation and music, and it's just. It's really, really pretty, and the platforming is some of the most unique platforming I've played in a while. Um, it's so, so much fun and fluid, and I, to me, it's like a flawless game. It's one of my favorite platformers. I can't recommend it enough, and I'm almost done with it. Cool. I got like two hours left in it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, we talked about it yesterday uh, that <clears throat> gaming has gone up tremendously for most people because it's something that, every, aside from watching movies or reading, that's like the next big thing that people can do because those games are going to continue to come out as long as they're finished. So yeah. it's a perfect way for people to be able Adam, to Adam, you time. say besides movies and reading, there's gaming. I think it's besides gaming, there's movies and reading. Well, that's what I mean. <laughs> like, if you look at what people are probably occupying their time with and which industry oh, is I'm sure like it's gaming killing it right most. now, gaming is just fucking blown up. Yeah. Yeah. 
the comic scene though i feel I, you had to catch up on comics this week or uh i read a couple but we've been so busy man literally we've been yeah. putting in 17 hour days over here uh and it's it's uh it's exhausting but it's fun there's a lot of great stuff mm-hmm. out right now i feel like march had a uh, some really great great launching points and new issues and I, I I mean it's a good time right now for comics I think. Yeah yeah I, I caught up on a couple things there was one or one book I read that I wasn't really like that into but I think that this might finally be the one weekend where I'm like you know I'm gonna sit and I'm gonna read some relax. comics. Relax yeah relax yeah. after we get you know some cleaning done and some other chores around the house but yeah it's yeah the upstairs is a disaster zone. <laughs> We've been keeping the studio a little bit on, you know, like together, but yeah, yeah, upstairs yeah. it's just upstairs. like ah! <laughs> that, we call that the kaiju zone. Yeah, that's the yeah. kaiju zone. Yeah, it's just all over the place. So what else you got, Adam? Um, so some stuff that's uh, some more movies are being dropped early, obviously, to keep people hopefully entertained through all this. Disney is releasing Onward. Whoa, Matt, this this, yeah. this one's for you, buddy. Uh, yeah, man. <laughs> uh, today, today at five p.m. Pacific time, the movie will be available uh, for rent. And today, on, on today at five p.m. Yeah. Are they wow. putting it on Disney Plus? It's gonna so it's gonna debut first on VOD, so you'll be able to rent it from your digital retailers, okay. like Prime or something. Yeah, exactly. Gotcha. And then on April third, it'll launch on Disney Plus. Wow. So they want to at least, I guess, try to like make, make money some cost, which yeah. I get. You know, you wonder though if they convince more people to sign up to Disney Plus, but that might not be a movie that gets people to rush to sign yeah. up. Yeah, if, if they were was... to just drop Black Widow on Disney right. Plus, you'd push signups. Oh yeah. Hundred percent. I mean, yeah. it needs more Marvel content. Bad, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, then the way back is also getting an early digital release on March twenty fourth, the same day as the uh, Birds of Prey movie, which the, it's both Warner Brothers, so that makes sense. Um, well, yeah, I've just been seeing a lot of people throughout the last couple of days have been is watching it, a lot of the. Is new it twenty fourth next Tuesday? Yeah. Do we need to do a double feature watch along? Oh, Ooh. I'm gay. Because there's Bloodshot and Birds of Prey. Bloodshot, Birds of Prey, The Way Back, and then... Well, I think for our audience, like yeah. Bloodshot, On, Birds of Prey. And then, then today we have Onward, we've got uh, The Invisible Man, The Hunt, Emma, and wow. I think I think the Trolls movie is also coming out today. Um, yeah, so I think we're going to have a lot of stuff that we can that we can do watch-alongs of, but I'm down to do a double feature. I think that'd be super fun to maybe, do Maybe that we can night. add that into our overall goal for... Uh, the next two days because our goal today if we hit our daily goal yeah. um, and you can if you tip during this show we'll read them out at the end uh, whether it's YouTube or Twitch we really do appreciate your support but if we hit our daily goal on Mon- uh, coming back <coughs> streaming on Monday we're going to be throwing a birthday party for Malika and we're going to try to create the Disneyland experience for her Monday's going to get if we hit our goal Monday's going to get weird it's going to get <laughs> weird one of the things uh, I want to do and we were talking about is uh, because we have the TV, we can use as like a background. I uh, yep. <laughs> we wanted to put her. We wanted to put her in a rolling chair and just push her past the TV and then like slide to another place and then push her back through and she can be like, wow. <laughs> another idea I had was uh, to actually get. Uh, I'm sure it's out there somewhere. I'm sure there are certain rides that have like video footage. Uh-huh. So to like put the TV behind her, and make it feel like she's like on the ride. We could do that thing you saw like the dad that put the little kid in the laundry basket. And, yeah. Like, shake her like a roller coaster. <laughs> Uh, Malika's like 98 pounds when wet. You could totally pick her up at him and like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that'd be, that'd be, that would be a lot of fun. We'll do that on Monday. And then I think there's a lot of, uh, you can find like, I think every ride has a video, right? On, right. Yeah. I saw on, uh, I think it was soaring over California. Someone did it on their TikTok account. So to just like have our feet in the frame, just like lifting up and you just see <laughs> soaring over California. I think we could have a lot of fun with it. So yeah, oh, if we hit our goal today, we'll be doing that on Monday. But then, yeah, Tuesday, I'm totally down to do double, a superhero yeah, yeah. double feature. That'd that would be, be good. Fun. That would be yeah. that would be really fun. Um, but, yeah, it's Malika's birthday. She was really bummed out because <clears throat> we were supposed to take her to Disneyland for her yeah. birthday. And we want to make sure that she still has a good time. Uh, but we also want to still make content, so we got to figure out. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. It'll work. Then I, I, I'm sure at this point a lot of people had heard this uh, news that the national tax filing deadline – was pushed to July 15th. That includes all Ooh. taxpayers and businesses. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. That just dropped. But I wonder if Malika's read that yet because that will lower her stress level. Part of what she's doing right now yeah. is tax. continuing to prep tax stuff yeah. because she's getting behind being on camera too much. Right. And uh, the the based on the conversation she had yesterday with the CPA, they did recommend, like, if you – and this is – 
it kind of depends. Like if you already kind of know your history with tax season and you know you're going to get money back, they said file immediately. Like try to get your money back as fast as you can mm. before some something happens and like you're not able to. Yeah. Um, but that is extended. <laughs> the government gives out checks to everyone and then they go, oh, we're, <laughs> oh, out, we're out, out of money. money. <laughs> we're out of money. We gave the stock market $1.5 trillion. We're, we're, out, of we're money. out. We're out. We're out of money, though. We're done. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. The news has been extremely frustrating. Um, oh, God. So stressful, dude. I, I watched that press conference this morning, and oh. I, I got through about 10 minutes, how, and I how was mu- like— How was your anxiety during that? I, I went back to sleep for A five minutes. A softball question. A softball I, I, I'm question. I'm just going to defer over here to this gentleman. A blah, softball blah, blah. Like, question. Oh what do you say to Americans who are afraid right now? That is an opportunity for a leader to knock it out of the park yeah. and reassure. And you know what? I, I almost hate saying this because I'm not a fan of Pence, but I want to give Pence credit. The night and day difference between when Trump gets off the stage and Pence gets up there and actually answers some questions. And it is it does get frustrating when he keeps deferring to like, you know, well, the president this, the president that. But at least he answers questions. Yeah. And at least he doesn't just sit there and badmouth everyone in a time of crisis. I don't like at this time. It's like I want I don't want bipartisan bullshit. I don't want you to do like we're you're leading us through a crisis. Just give me the facts. Yeah. Answer questions and, and not be a selfish prick. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it's you exhausting. Know. It, oh, it's very exhausting. It's very exhausting. It's it's extremely frustrating, too. Um, I saw that, and then I was like, eh, back to Animal Crossing. <laughs> <laughs> For real. No, I mean, I, there's so many people that I know that, like, will text about it, and they're like, I can't. I can't get through those things. I watch five minutes, and I'm like, i got to oh. turn it off before I throw my TV off the My mom patio. was messaging me while it was happening because yeah. she was just so anxious, you know? Yeah. And it's just like. It stresses people out even more yeah. on top of an already stressful situation. And yeah. it shouldn't. I turned on NPR the other day, and they had a psychologist on there trying to give people advice on how to deal with the way the administration is talking to you. Like the fact that we need a buffer there <clears throat> to, yeah. to help us understand, like, you know, like yeah. we, we want, I don't know. I, I, it's just, it's frustrating. It's frustrating. And you want to be like assured and you want to feel like, you know, you're in safe hands and not just make you more anxious. Uh, that's why Malika can't watch it. She won't watch. It just it just freaks her out. Too I get much. it. Yeah, get you know, it. it makes her anxiety go up too high. Uh, completely flipping 180 degrees from that. Yeah. Uh, there was an announcement today that Rosario Dawson is, jim- is joining the Mandalorian season two as Ahsoka Tano. What? <laughs> that was I saw that dude. I lost my mind. That's I pretty perfect casting. Mind. Whoa! <laughs> pretty yeah. pretty perfect. Yeah, yeah. Which is funny. We just watched uh, Zombieland Double Tap the other day. That is the best news I've heard all day. <laughs> I'm glad I waited for to say that last. I had no idea. Yeah. Well, you've been down here the whole morning. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. She's been a fan favorite for a while. And uh, there were rumors back and forth that she was going to join Mandal- – uh, she was just going to join Star Wars in some capacity as the character. Um, we're still kind of waiting for a StarWars.com to officially announce this. But I think it was Slash Film who reported this, and then they've been backed up a couple times by other reporters saying, like, yeah, that's happening, that's happening. Wow. I imagine that Star Wars is probably waiting until they have a kind of a gauge on if Mandalorian will still be able to come out in October, I think it was, um, which yeah. which makes sense. Like, I understand if they're like, well, we have this news, uh, let's kind of, like, wait. But, you know, with the way the industry is, despite the fact of what's happening, people are still trying to do their jobs and trying to find things for people to talk about in entertainment. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, so I'm pretty excited about that. I really like that character. And uh, I'm excited to see how that character oh, transitions. From, a lot of people like that character. Yeah, from from her uh, from her story in Rebels, and you know how we're going to be setting Filoni, up. Filoni, that's all Filoni. Oh, right of there. course, of course. And the way that that season ended, the saber. Are you kidding me, dude? That the Rebels ending. Well, even Mandalorian season I'm, one. Yeah, Mandalorian with the dark yeah. saber. I know. Yeah. Like that, oh. all that stuff tying in together. I'm like, yo. And as soon as people saw that. They were like, they're, this, they're, there's gonna have to be, they're gonna have to tie this into these. Ca- like, there's no yeah. way around this. So I'm excited. I, I do hope that this could be the beginning trend of seeing some of these like animated series characters uh, show up. This could be yeah. really fun. That's really such fun. good news. Yeah, man. Rosero Dawson should be protected. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, I'm very excited about that. Give her a security that. detail right <laughs> Give now. her a security detail? <laughs> Protect her. Uh, this is also an interesting thing that came up today. Netflix just announced that they're establishing a $100 million relief fund for coronavirus that will go towards uh, the hardest hit employees in television and film. It will obviously be prioritized towards people that are part of like the Netflix family. So if you're working on Netflix movies, shows, and all that sort of stuff, you will kind of get like first, first dibs at this. Mm-hmm. It's um, like DreamWorks Animation and... Uh, what other companies? Yeah, like, I mean, they, they, they didn't. I, I, I would assume that anything that's like a Netflix original probably has like yeah. the highest, highest priority. Yeah. And yeah. then uh, they also did say that $15 million will go to third parties and nonprofits providing emergency relief to out of crew, out of work crew, and cast in the countries where the company has a large production base. I think uh, what I've heard from people mm-hmm. in LA who have worked over there, um, though we may get frustrated with how they handle their shows, yeah. I've heard from people that work at Netflix itself yeah. that they like it a lot yeah. and that they mm-hmm. take a lot of steps uh, internally for diverse content and having diverse voices. I mean, we knew somebody who was hired to just be a consultant with like six other consultants mm-hmm. to just help out and make sure content's moving in the right direction. Yeah. Uh, and I've heard nothing but good things about how they treat their employees over there, which is kind of refreshing. Uh, yeah. K- K- Katie's uh, cousin works uh, as an editor in the anim- in Netflix animation. And he's said the same thing that they treat them really, really well. And, and like Netflix has a lot of creative freedom where some of the shows that they're working on it, it's there because it's they're they're not trying to just get the global pop, you know, like the majority. They're they're like targeting like like these niche kind of audiences that aren't just like you know American like American audiences or whatever. So they're able to kind of explore these different outlets, which has been really awesome for the creative side of things. So he loves it, and I've heard nothing but great things too. That's awesome. That's so good to hear because yeah. you hear about yeah. all these other big media companies that aren't as like, you know, they don't take care of people or like yeah. big tech companies that you think of. You know, Netflix to me, like you think of. Amazon, Google, like it's not up there all the way, but it kind of gets thrown in those same boats. So it's yeah. good to hear they take care of people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, do you guys think I, I there's I think there's kind of no way around this. I think uh, more of these big companies like the Netflixes, the Amazons, the Warner Brothers, the Disney's, all that sort of stuff. They're going to have to start doing more things like this. Like they've got to try to figure something out because, yeah, I mean, I can't imagine the amount of people collectively between all these companies that are in our industry who are going to i think they're estimating over 120,000 people are going to be without work yeah it, it sucks man i mean southern california again it's like the ab5 bill dropped at the worst time yeah and you throw that on top of everything else that's happening it's very hard to be a private contractor in los angeles right now and it's yeah like most of Southern California is freelancers and private contractors. It's our industry. Yeah. The yeah. industry of LA is built around entertainment. Yeah. You know, and entertainment, and, and I think that's what's interesting about what we do. Like, entertainment's more valuable now than ever, but mm-hmm. you can't make entertainment in a vacuum. Right. So. And Disney, you know, like we've heard a plan for people who are full time, like people who are at Disneyland, they're still compensating people who are working at Disneyland and stuff. But uh, same with like people who are full time in, you know, production. But like I said, there's nothing, I haven't heard anything yet about plan for freelancer so yeah and i'm sure that's like that's extremely tough for for a lot of people to like not have to not know to just not know and even for us like we don't know right now everything that we're doing is working but i mean debatable you know we also we're trying to figure out stuff in the back end i mean just to be completely transparent yeah right now we are running 100 percent like a live kickstarter Mm -hmm. but we also know like whatever it is we're feeling and whatever we're going through our audience is probably going through it too. Yeah. If we're terrified financially, our audience might be terrified too. Yeah. And, you know, at what point do they make a very, you know, honest decision of like, oh, I want to support Hyper, but I got to support myself. And yeah. I don't want people to feel guilty about that. Yeah. It's smart. Yeah. So we have to figure out, even on our end, what are other revenue models? What are other ways that we can start actually surviving yeah. as we move forward? Because we don't know how long this is going to last. We don't know how this is going to change the industry. Right. You know, uh, even if I know a lot of people are really concerned, like, hey, okay, we flatten the curve a little bit here and restrictions start to release a little bit. What's going to happen in November? What's going to happen when the fall hits? Yeah. Because these things almost always, if you follow history, come back even harder. Mm-hmm. So, like, are, do we have to be ready for it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I know. And it's like, it, it, it's tough because even as a solo creator, like we talked to Ethan yesterday, even if you are making content consistently and you're just relying on yourself to make stuff, you don't know how long things like YouTube ads are going to last. You know, at some point, these companies, like how much 
How oh, much can they constantly keep paying Google to run ads? But you've already seen that, like, YouTube is already, like, making it harder to make money off ads in the middle of all this. Mm. We've already had stuff being like, oh, you're going to get demonetized. Because they've, they've, no one's working in the office, so they've just yeah. upped the automated. algorithm to do it, which means more videos are getting flagged, so less ad revenue coming in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's tough. It is. It is. Uh, this was also a very weird article because at, at the beginning of the article, it says that there are discussions of Wonder Woman 1984 going digital. In the same article, they have quotes from people at Warner Brothers saying, like, we want this to be a theatrical release. We're not currently looking at doing this as a digital release. So why did the article say that? I don't know. It their sounds like clickbait. Their sources, yeah. their internal sources are saying that the, the discussions are happening at a very top level that not even the producer and the director are a part of. Uh, and well, okay, so to me, like, sometimes when this shit comes out, it's like, when you say discussions are happening, well, no shit. Yeah. No of course shit. they're looking at the, uh, at the landscape three months of from course. now. Of course. But that doesn't mean it's happening. Yeah. Discussions happen probably for every theatrical release that could possibly be coming out in the next year. Yeah. Of how mm -hmm. we're going to do this. At the very least. What's yeah. going to go on. Should we do this? So d saying discussions are happening is like, well, yeah, of course they are. That's the responsible thing to do. They have shareholders they have to report to. They yeah. have to have discussions about what might happen. Yeah, that's not outside of the realm of ordinary. But if the director... And everybody else is saying no right now, then I wouldn't take that seriously. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it could strike a bigger conversation of will every big theatrical release of this year be forced to go digital because next year, like, they've already have a bunch of release dates slotted for other movies. Or do you, li or do you literally take Good the point. theatrical release window of 2021 and just move and it? Shift it to 2022 and That's then shift, likely. You know? I think yeah, for Marvel I, I, movies. I think it's that, dude. Everything's getting, I think everything's getting pushed, man. Yeah. You know? And there's somebody, some producer somewhere is like, Whew. Yeah, right. You know, like, I need that extra, the Marvel method right now. Like, I yeah. need that extra six months. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's it's kind of crazy to think about, but we could live in a world where we'll find out in a couple of months that like every major release of 2020, 2020 is moving into 2021, which is going to cause those movies to like, it's going to be like a cascading ripple effect yeah. where everything could be delayed by a year because of all of this. And these smaller movies, you know, I don't know, these smaller movies, I don't really know if it's like worth it for them to to hold on a theatrical release if they if they already predict that they're probably yeah. not gonna make as much. Like maybe it's more worth it for them to just go twenty bucks on a digital streaming service of some kind and and, and drop it. Like maybe yeah. a movie like Emma that came out today would maybe it, do a little bit of I feel as, like this well. next week is gonna determine a lot. Yeah. If people the receipts. If people buy Bloodshot mm -hmm. as a Sony release, if they buy Emma if they buy onward, yeah, you know, then I think we will see these things. Yeah. If nobody does and people just stick to the free services or the services they are already subscribed right. to, because Netflix is about to drop a bunch of content too. Yeah. So are people just going to hold out for the Netflix content? At the same time, Netflix, and this is just in Europe for right now, they're limiting the quality yeah. of their streaming. So are people going to start, you know, going from their like 4K tier to like their standard definition <sighs> tier? But – Honest question, Adam. Yeah. Outside of us yeah. and a small percentage of our audience, how many people even check to see if it's a 4K UHD release or not before they click play? But even – I heard that you even pay more money for HD. Yeah. So, like, how many people are probably just auto-playing low maybe. resolution and not caring? Yeah, maybe. I, I don't, don't know. Think, I think we're a select – group you we know ha we have 4k on ours don't we oh yeah yeah, yeah. uhd everything yeah but but that's <laughs> us you know i think yeah. you know and we probably have audience members that are like oh yeah highest quality for everything best sure. bit rate but the majority of people they probably, probably don't, don't care. care yeah they probably just play whatever's available you and i have been in this house together every day for four days yeah <laughs> <laughs> we're facing each other's sentences <laughs> <laughs> that clip it's that cute. you put it's out very... yesterday where we were both like what oh my the god <laughs> at the same time <laughs> uh, um you know uh, I, I don't know. I think this next week will really determine, and I wonder if yeah. audience habits will actually buy. Yeah. But marketing's really tough right now. How do you market in a pandemic? I mean, you don't even have a release date to market towards. Right. How the so, hell? So, like, I've seen a couple posts about Bloodshot releasing digitally, yeah. but no marketing. Right. And you don't have marketing teams busting their asses off in their offices. Like, right. think of how hard it's been for anyone to market anything right now. So even in that regard, if you push a movie to digital release, how do you get the word out? How yeah. do you let people know? 
Or are they just going to, again, stick to their Amazon Prime or their Netflix account right. and watch whatever's there? Yeah, and, and, you know, like, how much are you willing to invest? Like, do you freelance people from home? And do you just say, well, peop- we, we need to market these movies. So, yeah, we're just going to release assets to these people to create stuff from home. We'll upload everything remotely, and we'll, like, we'll plug in as much advertising as we can. Yeah. It's tough. It's I- a really tough call. In the gaming industry, too, like, we're already hearing words that Final Fantasy VII Remake, uh, Remaster, it won't like have a physical release um as of now it's gonna get just digital or no physical as of now it's just digital i mean that doesn't bother me (laughs) yeah but with with the launch of a couple consoles i know someone in twitch chat was asking like what like will we be seeing the xbox uh series x or the ps5 and i don't think this is a good question i think think, think they'll push it i think we they have to manufacturing yeah yeah exactly which is which is a bummer because they look i think the product is ready i think both of them, I think they're just holding out for the holidays. They were holding out for the holiday season, but they're like this is the manufacturing aspect of it. Like they, we just right now it's up in the air still. I yeah. think we'll know the next month or so if we'll have the holiday release or not. But I don't, I have a feeling we won't. Never ever in my life did I think I would live through a time where like literally the world is on pause. Yeah, it's weird. It's like a, conceptually you're like, oh yeah, that would be nuts if the world just literally stopped functioning. But like it's. It's like there. But, I mean, but the so weird is thing there. is, we're now just getting kind of like to a place we were 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. You know, like yeah, we're over stimulated. Yeah, you know, like the amount That's of so movie, the amount of movies coming out, the amount of games that are coming out, the amount of everything. You know, uh, like I, yes, I mean, things are like production slowing down on all these things. But as far as like what's available for you as the individual, we still have access to more now. Oh yeah, than ever before oh, for sure. The internet Look, I know has for opened a it fact. up. I know for a fact there are games that people have not beaten or like haven't touched. Uh, I feel like we're in a click, like we're in this kind of like uh, micro, these like micro, uh, like a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like microcosm, like a little microbiome. What, what are you talking about? Like, like we're we move on so fast. Like we we oh, like yeah. for example, like when I think of like Nintendo Direct. Yeah. yeah, it's like we got we get a little bit now, but we want more. Like we're yeah. we're with social media and stuff has kind of made this mentality that I think is a little harmful um, personally. And I have to like I honestly another thing that going back to the beginning of our conversation, like I highly recommend you guys taking a break from social media, yeah. um, like if you can, because because that will drain you. Like you'll feel like yeah. it's these instant pleasures. Like this, you're getting a little bit like. Instant well, gratification. It's, it's interesting because I feel like YouTube and Twitch have both been a leading cause in this. Um, because or influencers in general as content creators algorithms support that we get more attention if we always focus on exactly what is new and something being a week old already gets you less results Mm -hmm. so we're only like doubling down and solidifying this idea that nothing of even a month or two old is of any value and it's only what's now right now what's tomorrow and what's right now if it's a new game you have to play the new game you can't play a game that's months old no one will watch it algorithmically it's going to perform a lot worse for you you got to do now you got to you know so we're doubling down on that we're kind of like circling around ourselves in that way and it'll be interesting to see if we slow down a little bit yeah what happens yeah uh i want to address this question just because it's a programming question but uh we are doing a watch along tonight at 6 p.m spider-man into the spider-verse it's on netflix Uh, at least it is in the united states you might have to check and see where it is if you're we'll put a timer up on screen Yes. It'll be great. It's super helpful. It's super, super helpful. It's going to be so much fun. This kind of ties in a little bit into the next into the next topic. Let's see how we're doing on time. Oh, only, we, only a couple we minutes. We only got a couple <laughs> minutes. So <laughs> some of these things we can skip. I think we can kind of end on this one. But uh, I was reading that uh, on The Verge, they were saying that a lot of musicians are actually turning to Twitch. Yes, because I've seen that. And I've seen Twitch make a push for it. Yeah. Uh, our old partner rep from when Lucas and I first started, Jimmy Weisenhunt, is now leading the charge to get musicians over on Twitch. Mm -hmm. And we have contacts and friends at Twitch that are trying to get comedians, playwrights, and musicians all on Twitch broadcasting directly to their audience. Yeah, because this article that I was reading, and this is a lot more of like the the indie artists, but, you know, all their shows have been canceled, so they have to try to find a way to to make money and all that sort of stuff. And a lot of the bigger uh, musicians, the John Legends and all that stuff, they're using Instagram Live because for them, they're just there to provide entertainment. Uh, They're doing fine. And Uh, there are some amazing musicians on Twitch. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh my God. I will not, I can't say this enough. If you've never seen Scene of Action Music on Twitch, do it. Look it up. Google it. It'll blow your fucking mind. (laughs) Monty is a genius. A dude is a genius. Have I showed you this? No. 
Google it. Go- Google it. Give it a Google. It'll blow your fucking mind. I'm sure it will. You look at the things we do here, yeah. and you know how stressful and time-consuming it is. He's a good example of someone who's like focused on one thing. I'm going to do this one thing, and I'm going to do it really, really, really well. Yeah. And he, he kills it. That's awesome. He kills it. But yeah, they were talking about, you know, obviously, like because of the way the incentivization works on Twitch, it's a nice way to um, make money in the immediate in the immediate future. But again, it's that conversation that we, we have every day here is like, when will that stop? Yeah. You know, that's the stressful part about this whole thing. Um, a quick question. Lucas, are you still there? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing a lot of these. I, I guess, the, I guess the, <laughs> the camera doesn't switch when I nod. <laughs> I forgot I forgot that he went to go walk the dog oh, and he, then no, came back. He just let the dog out. He was there the whole time. Oh. <laughs> he was, been, yeah. He's just been there. Cool, cool, I just, cool, cool. Yeah, I've just been vibing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Lucas, for you, like... On your own, is there anything that like you you want to be creating and can create, or do you feel like do you feel like it's just kind of too much pressure right now to be the one sole person making something? Uh, yeah, I got a we got a couple things that um, like personal projects that we're working on right now. You guys talked about it on stream the other day. We're we're yeah. redoing the movie Taken. Uh, but we're doing it f- from 90 different people and 90 yeah, we, different we homes. We have minute 80 to 81. I saw. We gotta, we gotta you, get have to sh- yeah. you have to shoot a minute. There's 67. <laughs> uh, so we're, we're putting that together. Um, we were talking about doing a, uh, a streaming from the, the Ruby Theater in downtown LA. Uh, we were talking about streaming like a stand-up comedy variety show um, for them. Uh, so there's some stuff that like I think you could – take this as you know a creative challenge and see what you can do with it you know make what can you make by yourself alone in your home uh with other creatives on the internet across the world yeah uh so that that's the way i'm kind of thinking right now outside of hyper stuff uh you know hyper being my my nine to five or my uh one to ten one to nine kind of job (laughs) Uh, (laughs) uh outside of that i think there's there's stuff you know we can all be thinking about as creators yeah and and you're currently uh you're currently working on some coloc to stuff too right lucas Yep. Yep. Uh, we're working on, we're going to have some messaging next week that you'll, you'll see. And we have some, uh, some individual videos that we're probably going to shoot. Um, we'll, we'll be talking about that soon. We should do the, uh, Gal Gadot imagine thing she did yeah. but for the, for the, the immigrant song that, uh, that back <laughs> <laughs> and get Chris Bramante. <laughs> I just want to say, Hammer of the Gods. <laughs> come from the I, I know that backfired now. on them a little bit because a, a lot of people were like, hey, come on, celebrities. We don't need you guys reciting songs to us. Like, donate from your to mansions. something. Yeah, donate to yeah. something. Give, yeah. give, give, give some people who worked on your movie some money or something. My God. Yeah. The, the, tone def- if- the tone deafness of Imagine No Possessions. If you yeah. just imagine, then you'll be okay. <laughs> just imagine harder and you won't get the virus. Oh, my God. You can be like me. <laughs> and, and it also, it's like a nice way of celebrities to remind us, when we get sick, we get access to testing. I know. That's a lot of things that other people were talking about, too. It was like, oh, oh, oh there's oh, no tests. Famous tests, people are getting tested. Yeah, but famous people and athletes and stuff, like, oh, they have, they have VIP access. You need to be course. holding this administration responsible every day. Call your senator, call your governors. Like, they'll put pressure on the bigger administration who is lying to you pretty much every day when they just tell you bullshit of like, we did this, we did that. It's like, well, where are the receipts? Yeah. Where, where's the actual masks? Where are the respirators? Where are the tests? How come more and more stories keep hitting social media of people saying like, I'm super sick and I won't, they won't test me. They've tested for everything else, but I don't meet the guidelines still. When those guidelines are supposed to be lifted – Healthcare professionals are confused. Yeah. Hold your government accountable. This is a democracy. Demand it. Demand answers and call your representatives. They can put pressure on. Bing, bang, boom. Uh, we have a couple questions from the Super Chat on YouTube. Thank you guys so much for your tips. We very much appreciate it. From Carrie McGuire, who says, love you guys. Thank you so much. Oh, we thank really you. Appreciate it. Oh, uh, yeah. Rebecca L. asks, how do you guys feel about an emergency UBI? Came over t- from Twitch. You guys are great. An, em- an emergency UBI? Yeah. Is universal that, oh, basic universal basic income. income. Uh, I'm for it. I, I was actually, I, I would have voted for Yang uh, all 100%. I'm, I, I wouldn't call myself Yang Gang because that sounds silly and I don't like associating myself into like groups with political parties like that. But I thought Yang was extremely intelligent and had some great ideas. And I'm glad that people who are looking into this are consulting him and his team. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think that it could help a lot of people. But I also think it's really interesting to see it kind of being lumped together 
mm-hmm. as one thing for the whole country. Whereas like, you know, a thousand dollars in New York or LA for a low income worker is a lot different than a thousand dollars for someone in the middle of Arkansas. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. those are, you know, so how do you judge these things? I think right. very intelligent people are going to have to do a lot of work to make it make sense. Yeah. That's, that's gotta be a really tough challenge because, you know, I mean, we even just the b- very basic things that we talk about, you know, even when it came to some of these movies that are releasing early, they're 1999. A lot of people are like, that's really expensive. I'm like, well, yeah, but for us in LA, that's the cost of a regular movie ticket is yeah. 20 bucks. Yep. So it's like f- figuring out that balance must be very, very tough. Um, and then, Super Samurai, Super Samurai One asks, "Hey, I've never really gone into Star Wars yet. I'm in, I'm 21, I'm in my 21 years of life. How would you guys suggest starting? Just the movies and the Mandalorian? I will tell you, I would start with the original trilogy first. Yes, do episodes four, five, and six, and then jump to Clone Wars, the original cartoon. Just." All over the place. Just all over the place. Look, you don't need to watch the prequels. Just go right into Tarkovsky's uh, Clone Wars. Just do it. You're going to be like, this is the best. Star Wars is awesome. I mean, this is amazing. Gendy's, you go- Gendy's Clone Wars is pretty awesome. Yeah, just go. Just, I- Gendy, Gendy's Gar- just do it. Do it. You know you know what's funny? Uh, Katie actually did. We did a watch along recently because she's never seen them all. Did you uh, do the Hector Navarro edition? That's all weird. I did. I, I went chronological with Katie because she's okay. very much a person who needs to connect everything. Gotcha. Uh, so I watched it episode one through three. Um, we didn't watch Clone Wars. We're going to go back. Um, sure. Then I did, then I did uh, Solo. Mm-hmm. Then I did Rogue One. Then I did the trilogy. Then I did the last three. Wow. Dude. Wow. And she loved it that way. Wow. She was like, oh my gosh, that's this person. And then like, yeah, that's what yeah, they yeah. talked about on this. So it was like really cool to see her experience it that way. For her, it made a lot of sense. And okay. I, I liked Solo a lot watching it this way. Sure. I don't know. I thought it was great this time around. But. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess it also, like, my thing, too, is, like, it really, to me, it kind of depends on how much Star Wars lore you know. Mm-hmm. If you know all the spoils and surprises, then I would say you can go chronologically and you're not going to miss out on, like, any reveals. Yeah. You know? Episode 2 is the worst one, though. Oh. In my opinion. That, that goes without saying. That that whole Naboo scene where he's, like, Anakin touches, like, Natalie Portman's back. Yeah. and they, it's, it's so very cringe. Weird. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. really bad. Ugh. If you don't know... Squat, squat lick about Star Wars, I would say watch the original trilogy, then the prequels, then the sequels. And then I would say, like, you should go back and watch the Clone Wars animated series, Gendy's and Dave Filoni's. I would check out Star Wars Rebels, which is also very, very good. And then definitely, obviously, watch Rogue One and Solo. I, I think the order of it, you know, it, it's kind of up to you. You could also watch the original trilogy and then, like, watch The Mandalorian and then go into The Force yeah. Awakens. All right. Uh, it kind gotta, of depends on you. We're going to start wrapping this up. We had two come in from uh, a couple people on Twitch. Metis Vodum, uh donated and said, yes, sleep. Sorry about the panic. Thank you so much for your thank support. You. And then KK Winch donated and said, thank you for helping me make my time at home more bearable. Thank you thank for you joining for us. Uh, this has been Hypercast. We're going to be going live Monday through Friday for as long as this quarantine uh, self-isolation <sighs> camp social distance here on Hyper RPG last. Thank you, Matt and Lucas, for joining us today. Miss you guys. Uh, oh, thank I miss you guys. You guys. You guys. And, uh, and thank you for practicing safe social distancing during all of this and setting good examples for the rest of the world. Uh, this is Zach and Adam reporting to you live from Hyper RPG. <laughs> this is why you don't do the intros on any show. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. uh, but guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll be back. Uh, if you're on YouTube, jump over to twitch.tv slash hyperrpg. We'll be cutting over to Malika to do some fun stuff with survival there as well. Skills. Some survival skills. And then we're going to be watching Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse Sinister later tonight six at 6. Game. But before that, we'll do Sinister 6 at Woo! 4. It's so, going to be so much fun. We actually have this fun. sign by the creator. It says, to Zach and Malika, kick Spidey's butt. Boom. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow at 1 p.m. here on YouTube. We'll be right back. Bye. Bye. Bye.